In ancient Greece, the Corybantes were an intriguing group of dancers and warriors who were devoted to the worship of the Phrygian goddess Cybele. They were known for their unique style of drumming and dancing, which was considered an essential part of the goddess's worship. But perhaps one of the most intriguing aspects of the Corybantes was their crested and armed appearance. While it may seem contradictory to their roles as dancers and worshippers, it is believed that they carried these symbols in a symbolic capacity during their ritual dances. Some believe that the Corybantes originated from the same region as the Corbantes in Phrygia and were thought to be the sons of gods Helios and Rhea. Throughout many myths and legends of the region, they played a significant role. The Corybantes were not limited to their worship of Sibylle. According to some sources, they were also associated with the Curides, a similar group of dancers in Greek mythology, who worshipped several different gods and goddesses through their dance and drumming practices. Despite their initial association with the worship of Sibylle, the Corybantes later became a significant part of Greek mythology and folklore. Their story remains mysterious and fascinating, even today, and their close relationship between music, dance, and religion continues to inspire people around the world. Long ago in ancient Greece, the Kurites were a well-known group of armored male dancers who played a significant role in civilizing the land. These talented dancers moved to the rhythm of a drum, while their rhythmic stamping of the feet entertained the masses. The Greeks believed that dance was an essential activity that helped to civilize their society. The dance in armor was specifically reserved for male coming-of-age initiation rituals. The tradition was closely linked to warrior victory celebrations. The French classicist, Henri Jean Mer, and Jane Ellen Harrison have noted that the Curites and Cretan Zeus were closely related to the transition of boys into manhood in Cretan cities. What is fascinating is that the English name Pyrrhic dance is a derivative of the original Pyrrhike or the Perikios Koros, known as the Perikian dance. Interestingly, it has no relation to the King Pyrrhus of Epirus who invaded Italy in the 3rd century BC. His name was only attached to the Pyrrhic victory, which was achieved at an exorbitant cost, tantamount to a defeat. Overall, the Kurites were an impressive group of performers who brought joy and entertainment to the people of ancient Greece. Their armor and impressive dancing moves left a lasting impression on the civilization that they helped to shape and mold. Long ago, in the land of Phrygia, there were groups of male confraternities known as the Corybantes. They were known for their ecstatic practices, but they were often confused with similar groups like the Idean Dactyls or the Cretan Kurites. The Kurites, in particular, were tasked with guarding infant Zeus. It was believed that their clashing spears and shields were so loud that they drowned out Zeus's cries and prevented his father Cronus from discovering him and eating him. In their rituals, the Corybantes also presided over the infancy of Dionysus, the god of wine and ecstasy. This wild cult was similar to that of the female Menads, who were also followers of Dionysus. Interestingly, in Ovid's Metamorphoses, it said that the Kurites were born from rainwater, which suggests a connection with the Hyades. Archaeological findings from the cave where the infant Zeus was hidden included spectacular bronze shields decorated with patterns derived from North Syrian originals, and a bronze gong depicting a god and his attendants in a distinct Near Eastern style. These artifacts give us a glimpse into the rich cultural history of the ancient world, where different groups had unique and fascinating beliefs and practices. Long ago, in ancient Greece, there were a group of legendary beings known as the Kurites. These beings had multiple roles, including serving as guardians and initiators of infant Zeus. However, they were also known to practice primitive magic, metalworking, and have seership abilities. According to the scholar Jane Ellen Harrison, they held the belief that metallurgy was a nearly magical art. This belief led to them being included in multiple groups, such as the Kaberi, Corybantes Euboioi, and Corybantes Samothrakioi. It was even said that the Titan Enitos was considered a Kurite. Interestingly, Homer referred to the bravest Achaeans as Kurites. Odysseus was even instructed by Homer to select the most courageous among them to bear gifts to Achilles. 
It's an interesting detail that still holds relevance to this very day. In mainland Greece, the Kurites of Aetolia and Acarnania are said to have originated from Crete. It's a tradition that is still preserved to this day. The Kurites' legacy of being mythic guardians and masters of metallurgy may have been a thing of the past, but their story still lives on. It's a legacy that has continued to inspire people throughout the ages. Do you want to explore more Greek mythology stories? Who do you want to see featured next? Subscribe and leave a comment below to let me know. I'll see you in the next video.